All right, I'm gonna go over this question first and explain it, but at the end, I'm gonna make a note to myself. Let's let's talk about the placement of this question, okay? Stick around, because there's there's some drama around this question. But let's just get to the, the question itself first. Uh, it makes barely any sense, but I'm gonna help. For the function f, for each increase in the value of x by c, where c is a positive constant, the value of f of x increases by a factor of 27. That means multiplies. Which of the following equivalent forms of the function f displays 1 over c as a coefficient of x? So my first instinct reading this is, oh, I'm going to arithmetize. I'm going to make up whatever number I want for c. I'm going to pick a point, and I'm going to try to see how it changes and then just see which one gives me what I want. But it's the end here that kind of limits us in a way that I didn't think about it first. Uh, they're telling us that it already displays 1 over c as a coefficient of x which means there's gonna be an X in each of these equations and the thing right in front of it that's attached to it at, uh, from you know multiplication is going to tell me what C is, right? So let's literally zoom in here on this first choice. So we have an X, the only X in that equation, and then one half is the coefficient. It's an exponent, but it's one half times X is in that exponent, so it's fine. So what that means is that the one over C is the one over half or one over two for this um, question or for this choice. Meaning that each of these choices, you can kind of scan now, each of them has a fraction right in front of X, meaning we know the value of C for each. So let's, let's pull that out. Let's just make this easier. So this is gonna be C equals two, this is C equals six, this is C equals four, and this is C equals three. Where did those come from? Two, six, four, three. Right, It's the bottom of the fraction that's attached. That is me following this instruction here. So I'm getting C from that piece. Yeah, that's crazy. That's really poorly worded and, and difficult to understand, but that's what they mean. So now we can follow the other part of the uh, equation, right? So the, the question. For the function f, for each increase in the value of x by c, where c is a positive constant, so we're increasing it by whatever value we just pulled out of there, the value of x, f of x increases by a factor of 27. Now I'm gonna plug points into equations because it's telling me to increase something, but I don't have that increase. I don't know what I'm, what I'm starting with, so how do I know what the increase is gonna be? So it's easier for me if I have a number. So I'm gonna plug points in, and of course I'm gonna start with the easiest point. All that they say is x uh, is you know a value here, so let's do what happens if we start with f of zero, right? So if I look at all of these, I can kind of scan them really fast. Since these are all exponents, if I made those zeros, let's just do it for a, 48 times three to the one half of zero. Well, one half of zero is zero. Three to the zero is one. So this thing is 48 times one, which is just 48. And if we do that for all of these choices, we're gonna keep getting 48, right? Because all of this stuff is raised to the zero in B, meaning that 48 is gonna be multiplied by one when we raise it to the zero. The same thing's gonna happen here, and the same thing is gonna happen here. So. Um, if you don't believe me, put it in Desmos, check it out. But that's what's happening is all of these are gonna be 48. Meaning when we increase the value of X by our C, we should increase F of X by um, 27, by multiplying by 27. So let's try that. So the final part of this stupid question is we're gonna increase by C. So let's do that for A. That means we're now gonna do F of two because we have F of zero, which we know is 48. And we're going to, let's, let's actually see what we're going to look for. We're going to multiply that by 27, get my calculator, and 48 times 27 is 1296. So I'm looking for 1296. That's the magic number that's going to make me very happy and solve this question for me. So when we do f of 2, because 2 is increasing 0 by the value of c, by 2, we're going to get 48 times 3 to the one half of two. Now look what happens if we do one half of two. It turns that into a one, right? One half of two is one. So this whole exponent basically is irrelevant because it's three to the first. So that's 48 times three, which I know is not gonna be 48 times seven, but just to kind of give it to you, or four times 27, but just to give it to you, it's 144. So that's not it. <laughs> so let's do this again. Now we gotta do this for B. So now we're gonna do F of six. Why six? Because that's what we have to increase x by. x was zero, now we have to increase it by c. In choice b, c is six. 
this is weird. We're not doing the same C because each choice has provided me with a different value of C. So that's annoying, but 48 times three to the third. And again, one sixth of six is basically irrelevant because that's just one. So three to the third is 27, right? So if you don't believe me, again, calculator, three to the third is 27. 48 times 27 is 1296. So this looks good. Let's double check. Let's look at everything else. So here we're going to do F of four and we're going to have 48 times nine to the first because again, the fraction is going to cancel. So 48 times nine is not uh, one, uh, 1296. It's 48 times nine is 432. And this one is going to be F of three because that's our C. So 48 times 27 to the one third times three is going to be just 27 to the first and then to the one half right? So uh, it's going to be messy. I'm not going to bother. Messy, unhappy space. Uh, it's going to be the square root of 27 that we're multiplying by, not 27 itself. So that proves choice B. So that is the answer. That is the explanation. As crazy as that was, uh, I wish there was a nicer way. I mean, I do love that at the end of the day, it's plug points into equations. The hardest part for me is right here where it's just so odd that each choice is going to have a different value for C and we have to pull it out of the equation in such a weird way. That, that is very strange. I can't say that I've ever seen anything like this before in an SAT question. And that gets me to uh, the point that I wanted to start with is what is the deal with this placement? We're in the hard module. We should expect hard questions, right? But number eight, that's still the first, you know, half certainly of this test, first third almost, we really don't see this level of craziness that early, even in the hard module. Yes, they will be harder than a number eight in the first module, but this is insane. This is like the last question. This is like a number 22, in my opinion. This is supposed to be near the end. Why isn't it there? Well, this is where the drama comes in. In July of 2024, the College Board randomly updated the first three Blue Book practice tests, which this is one of them. And the, their reason, I think, for doing this is that they originally, the ver original versions of these practice tests were not hard enough. And everyone who took them got amazing scores and then went for their real SAT and were completely shocked because they were not prepared for the level of difficulty of the real exam. So this is the college board covering their ass and trying to fix a mistake that they made very early on when they released the digital SAT. So what did they do? Well, there were a couple of questions in every module on the real test and on the practice tests that don't count. Two questions, every section don't count for your score. This is one of them. And so what they did to update this test and make it harder is they swapped out one of the questions that was easier and didn't count and put in this hard one to, I guess, replicate the difficulty. The thing is, if you get this wrong, at least when I'm making this video, it will not affect your score. So it doesn't belong here. It's going to throw off your pacing for this entire section. And it's probably not realistic to expect a question like this on the real SAT. On your real SAT, you will have hard questions in the hard module, but they're going to be at the end. You're not going to have something crazy hard really early. So this is just weird for lots of reasons. And the fact that they're using this to make this like a harder test, and then it ends up not even counting for your score, it's just a giant mess, basically. So uh, I'm sorry that you had to deal with this, uh, but if you got this wrong, don't worry about it. it. Again, it didn't affect your score for this practice test, um, but also on the real test, you probably won't see something this crazy this early, so it's not going to throw your pacing off. That said, if you do happen to cross something this crazy that early, it might be the experimental uh, qu questions that don't count, or it just might not be worth your time anyway. And so you're better off just moving on, right? We, we want to always maximize the correct answers, which means that at certain points in both hard modules, reading as well, we're going to need to make decisions about what's worth our time. And uh, you got to be able to just pick a random letter and move on and not worry about a question like this because it's going to distract you from getting other points later on in the section. So hopefully that's what you did. And if you did get it wrong, it was because you randomly guessed, uh, but not an important question. Feel free to comment if you have questions or thoughts about that, but it, may, it makes me very annoyed that this question is question number eight. So hopefully you can tell.